welcome back to the channel everybody today is a beautiful day it's about time to drive this car so i need to get some work done uh, i gotta fix the door i had to do the door actuator i couldn't find one for the passenger side right now so i got one for the driver's side which i mean the passenger door hasn't opened from the outside for years now i just haven't bothered with it um so yeah, I got to try and get this door all back together today. Hopefully that's all done. I got a little bit of work to do underneath the car still. And then I got to fix the bumper. I had uh, tried to make a fiberglass lip directly to the bumper. Because as you know with these E46 bumpers, they're just like the Volkswagens and Audis. Where the back actually is just like a curl here and then it steps up and goes across so you can't even set the bumper flat on the ground like here there you go super annoying because there's not really anything you can do to them and i didn't want to get an m3 replica bumper like everybody else so i decided to try and make my own it didn't really turn out all that well to be honest like i like the idea of it but uh it just didn't turn out the way i thought it was going to so a lot of fiberglass wasted i'm thinking i might cut the lip off so that i still have the flat ends and then i'll make another piece that'll just bolt flat to the bottom of it for the lip so hopefully Everything works out with that, otherwise I'm going to have to buy a bumper, which kind of sucks, but, you know, I'm trying to do everything custom, DIY, one-off type of deal. It's like the exhaust. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and get all this stuff done because I want to drive this thing. We got our battery relocation. The box delete, the wheel well delete. One thing is I'm probably going to have to cut the bottom of the bumper off here. So the air is not catching right there. And beyond that, I actually might um, cut it all the way up to the top and cut this whole trim piece out. And just have it open. And then I'll cut the exhaust at the... I'll cut it back here at one of these bends and tilt it up more so that it's up into the bumper, but we'll see. Well, let's get this door fixed and hopefully it's not too bad. Everything's real tight spaces in here, so it's super annoying. But uh, you do have to remove the, the rail. And here's my hack job of a repair when the torque of the window motor snapped all its brackets. I just welded them all back together. I have a new motor, but I'm going to have to get this whole rail piece. Likely. I thought about trying to remake all these pieces, but um, yeah, it's easier just to get a whole new rail for, I think, like 150 bucks used, so it's not too bad. So yeah, let's get this door actuator in and... Go from there. So here's the actuator. Shout out to eBay. I finally found one. And now that I found this one and I hadn't ordered the passenger one yet, it got sold and now I can't find a passenger side one. But anyways, uh, this is a different mechanism to open the door from anything late model 2000 and was it late model 01 and up. This is a early model 2001 it has this arm is totally different from pretty much everything after that so a little bit tricky to find Should be good. 
as long as it lines up. On to the next. So this part's quite a bit different than the other doors. All the newer doors have a bolt going through the end of the door here. There it is. Feel good though. Wow. Doors never opened this nice since I had the car. <laughs> That's funny. Now I just need to find one for the other side. What a pain in the ass of a job. But I'm so happy it's done. Alright. All right, we got all the doors done. I'm moving on to finishing up some of the wiring for the air fuel ratio gauge. It's already wired in, but I need to get it hooked up for data logging. So I know you can tap into the O2 sensor, and I'm not exactly sure how to do it that way. So I'll try it this way. If I can't get it to work this way, then I'll figure that out. Um, so I've already got the power hooked up to what did I use? I think I used the uh, the radio because I have no radio hooked up or anything. So I just used a, um, I forget what they call them, Adafuse. So it's still got the radio hooked up and I'm just plugged in alongside it. And I have my ground wire going to the empty bin under the hood. Everything's fed through and hooked up. Coming right through here. Now, oh, I got the DB9RS23RS322 RS32, connector. Um, I've got this little mini gender changer. So, what I'm going to do, because I don't want to have this cord always around, so I'm going to start off with trying to just tap in. So it'll be blue wire, what is it, blue wire to pin to. So it's going to be blue wire to pin to, and then I'll have a ground going from here up to the same spot underneath the hood, following the other ground wire. And that should be everything I need. That way I can tuck this away and just plug this in whenever I need to. Otherwise, I don't have to have this cord out. Um, I know it's not really necessary, but I just thought it would be nice. So, otherwise, I was just going to tap straight into this, but I think it's better to have, have this end first. So, that's what we're going to do. Now i got to go find some wire. All right. And into the storage unit. Stuff in here from... All the cars, the old Type R valve cover. Oh, I missed this beast. And I really wish I didn't sell the engine because I bought it for about six grand. Uh, 6,100 all in after taxes for a full swap, harness, transmission, everything. And I see them going for more than that now, so. That really sucks, and it was a hell of an engine. So much fun. So much fun. More Honda parts. Here we go. I do need quite a bit. So. So 
So what I need, this is the, this is here. So the second one in and the last one. Second one in is the blue wire. So I pulled the harness back out so that I can do it from here because getting these things pinned is absolutely ridiculously hard. Woosa. There you go. Very ugly, but it's not actually touching anything. All right. Okay, well, that's that. Another one done. I gotta figure out some internet stuff out here for, before I can test it, but. So, we're gonna run this ground wire to the same spot underneath the hood. So I'll take, all I did was put an eyelet on. I had to drill the hole out though, cause the stud in there is too big. But uh, there's a little grommet underneath the dash that the, that the engine harness goes, or the dash harness goes through. Or, yeah, so we're just using this grommet here. So I'll have to do the same thing as I did on the on these ones. Got my uh, angel eyes here. All right, so I just had to drill it out a little bit there. Give it a top down. It'll, should be good. Okay, well, that's all. Here's the, uh, the add a fuse that I had plugged into the radio spot, I believe. Good thing I didn't look where I pulled it out of. And we got this. Plugs into here. Golden. That's one more thing done. Perfect. Everything still works. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to wait to test this part, but we'll get that done soon. Um, yeah. Just trying to do all these finishing touches. I want to get this thing done. That's it for this video. I'll uh, get back to you. I'm going to work on some of this uh, little miscellaneous stuff here and there. So, and so the next few episodes are probably going to just be like a vlog style. Uh, jumping one thing to the next. Just trying to get everything finished. And uh, yeah. That's it for this video. Remember to drop a comment below if you like what you're seeing. If there's something else you want me to make a video on. And like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.